Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to lecture session seven. Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture session seven on uh, forced convective heat transfer. In the previous class, uh, we had established the basic fundamental concepts uh, that, that are required for our analysis of internal flow uh, forced convective heat transfer problem. We had discussed uh, the hydrodynamically fully developed flow situation, thermally fully developed flow situation, and the important concept of the mean temperature or bulk mean temperature. So we have uh, discussed all these concepts and uh, typically we have two boundary conditions which are very important uh, from, an, uh, from an engineering application point of view which are of constant wall heat flux and constant surface temperature, wall temperature boundary condition. So we have taken up these two boundary conditions and we have seen how the uh, mean temperature variation uh, happens in these two situations also. Okay. Now today, let us start with an actual analysis of an uh, internal flow problem and let us obtain the value of Nusselt number. So if you recall, Nusselt number should be a constant and we should obtain a constant value uh, after the course of analysis that we will be taking up. Okay. The first problem is that of a hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow between parallel plates with constant wall heat flux. So this is the problem that we are taking up. So uh, you need to note that the flow is th hydrodynamically fully developed. So we are assuming that the flow is a hydrodynamically fully developed flow, that is the velocity profiles are already developed. So we are not uh, considering the developing flow situation. So that is out of the scope. So we will only consider the developed flow situation. Okay, fully developed flow situation. Let us start the derivation. Okay, now uh, you consider the energy equation uh, for a two dimensional system without viscous dissipation and heat generation. So, the energy equation in Cartesian coordinate system, which we have already uh, derived in the class, will reduce to uh, an equation of this format. So, you will only have x and y coordinates. Z uh, coordinate is not there because we have assumed that the width of our parallel uh, plate channel is very large compared to the depth. Okay. Now, for a thermally fully developed flow situation with constant wall heat flux, so in the previous class we noted that dou t by dou x equals dt w by dx, which is equal to dt m by dx, and all these three are constant, so which we have already noted in the previous class and v is also zero so this uh, uh, we discussed during uh, hydrodynamically fully developed flow situation that v should be zero okay now when this is the situation so if you apply these simplifications to the energy equation that we have here so you will end up with an equation of this sort okay so now Further, if you introduce the non-dimensional temperature theta, so what is the definition of theta? So you can write theta as T minus T wall divided by T mean minus T wall. Okay. If you introduce this theta here, so you will have this uh, coming to balance the uh, differential. So your equation will come to this format. So we saw that in the previous class, so you can write dTm by dx uh, using a overall uh, energy balance for, by this expression. Okay. So this we have discussed in the previous session itself. So where P is the perimeter. Okay. So for mass flow rate m dot so mass flow rate is nothing but rho. So if you have a pipe, so the cross-sectional area A into velocity. What velocity is to be considered? So we will consider the average velocity. So the average velocity that is passing through this cross-section. 
okay so the average velocity is considered why average because the profile is parabolic the velocity profile is parabolic with maximum velocity at the center line so if i take maximum velocity i will get the maximum flow rate so what i should do is i should take the average of all the velocities in the given cross section and which is given by the average velocity u bar so that is why i have considered this okay so dtm by dx uh, is given by q uh, wall heat flux into p by rho u a cp okay now let us continue this derivation let us substitute for dtm by dx okay on substitution in the above equation and further simplification so you can see that it will reduce to this format okay u by u bar into q w by h where h is the depth uh, uh, above the center line tm minus tw into k d square theta by d, dy square okay it varies on theta varies only with y so when the flow becomes fully developed it is not a function of x anymore so there is no need to write the partial differential okay so u by u bar so q is nothing but h into tw minus tm so why tw minus tm it depends on how you uh, write the expression so imagine this is our parallel plate so if you are passing heat in this direction so this is our y axis and this is the x axis so if this is tw then your q should become tw minus tm this is tm okay so on the uh, rhs it will become a tm minus tw into k into d square theta by dy square now if you rearrange the terms so finally you will attain this format now let us define a non-dimensional uh, value of y, y bar uh, sorry there is a typo here it is not small h so it should be capital H y bar is y by capital H so what is this so if this is the parallel plate channel so this is the center line this is my y axis so the y coordinate I am defining so this is H and this is also H as per our definition so this entire depth is 2h so i am non dimensionalizing y by dividing it with the depth h okay so this is what if you use this here if you substitute you can do this on your own instead of y if i make it y bar okay so this term will become the nusselt number so what is the nusselt number with respect to h it is nothing but heat transfer coefficient into uh, h i k so you can do this on your own and check out so this is the simplified energy equation which we need to solve to obtain the value of nusselt number you can see that already we have the nusselt number in the equation only thing uh, now which is left out is to calculate its value and you know that this is a constant also from our preliminary analysis itself we have established that the nusselt number should be a constant value now our focus is to calculate that constant value okay so the energy equation for a constant wall heat flux hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow situation is d square theta by dy bar square plus nusselt number with respect to h into u by u bar equals zero okay let me erase this uh, proceeding further now uh, for a pressure driven flow which is uh, called as plain Poiseuille flow flow between two parallel plates so which is um, uh, for an incompressible fluid laminar uh, situation you call it as a plain Poiseuille flow the velocity distribution is already known so this can be easily obtained from the navier stoke equation so I will not do it uh, here because our focus prime focus is on heat transfer so you can easily take the uh, navier stokes equation in the cartesian coordinate system and apply the simplification and easily obtain this uh, velocity distribution uh, you take it up as an assignment because this is already done in fluid mechanics i don't want to repeat this again okay so we'll directly take up the uh, 
uh, result of it okay now u by u bar is 3 by 2 times 1 by uh, y bar squared okay so now what are the boundary conditions for the previous equation that we need to see so the first uh, let me draw the problem domain uh, for clarity so we have these two parallel plates okay so you are having a heat flux qw which is entering uh, your uh, parallel plate channel so this is the axis this is the y direction and this is x okay now when y bar equals 1 so when y bar equals 1 so this situation what is y bar y bar is y by h so when will it become 1 when y becomes equal to h that is at the wall so y bar equals 1 at the wall this is at the wall obviously theta will become 0 why theta is t minus tw by tm minus tw so at the wall t will become equal to tw so this will become 0 so theta is 0 when is y bar equal to 0 so this is at the center line this is at the center line or axis okay so what is the boundary condition that is prevailing at the axis the symmetry it is symmetrical along y axis the entire velocity profile if you take so it is symmetrical even the temperature profile is also symmetric about the center line so the d theta by dy equals 0 this is how we will take symmetry so there are two boundary conditions now it is a second order differential equation you can easily solve it so on solving this so how do you solve it substitute uh, the velocity profile which is 3 by 2 times 1 by uh, y bar squared in the previous expression here uh, sorry here you substitute for u by u bar okay integrate it twice you have two boundary conditions determine the constants c1 and c2 it is not a very difficult uh, integration that you need to do so when you do that simplification so you will end up with a result like this please do the integration yourself if you uh, get stuck or if you get any doubts you can always write to me and get it clarified so i have given the result for your uh, comparison and uh, checking out whether you have done all the steps properly so this is what you will get what is this now this is the non-dimensional temperature non-dimensional temperature you have obtained but where is the actual solution that we want we want the value of nusselt number now how to get the value of nusselt number so to do that you have to invoke the definition of our mean temperature you have to invoke the uh, definition of the bulk mean temperature to calculate the value of nusselt number so let us do it you know that the bulk mean temperature is a function of x which is given by uh, the definition that we have already uh, taken up so please be careful here so this is rho u into da da is the differential area so please don't confuse it with d into area or something like that okay rho cp will cancel out in both numerator and denominator so this was the definition that we took earlier so integral of u da is nothing but uh, the average velocity into cross-sectional uh, area so so if you consider an elemental area uh, if you take a small area so let me write so this is my parallel plate flow if i consider a small cross section here uh, this is the width uh, w so if i write this uh, area so it will come out to be something like this and the total area is 2h into w the uh, cross-sectional area as you can see here okay so if I consider a small strip like this the thickness of the strip is dy so dy into w is the differential area okay this is dA 
a is 2h into w rectangular uh, thing that you can see from this sketch okay now the limits of integration is minus h to h why is minus h to h so you have the plate like this this is the axis the total depth is 2h so this should be minus h to 0 to plus h so the total depth is 2h so that is what i have done now utilizing an identity for definite integrals what is that so if you have an integration of this sort minus a to a some function okay so you can just write it as 0 to a twice f into uh, some differential okay so i have utilized that uh, identity here and i have replaced uh, the y with y bar so i can easily arrive at this uh, uh, result so please work it out please work out yourself uh, the all the steps i am not showing so you can easily do it so y is replaced by y bar what is y bar y bar is y by h okay then you substitute the velocity profile here u by u bar by 3 by 2 into 1 minus y bar square you substitute the velocity profile and uh, for t what you will substitute so t you know uh, theta is t minus t w by t mean minus t w so t is nothing but theta into t m minus t w plus t w you substitute that here for t okay theta you already know that it is Nusselt number into some uh, distribution that you have obtained so you plug it in there and just integrate just plain integration you should do so after you do the integration so since it is not a very difficult integration to do and apply the limits of 0 to 1 so you will end up with this uh, set of numbers so i have written the numbers deliberately so that you can uh, verify uh, your calculation whether it is right or not uh, whether your integration uh, is been proper or not so you will get Nusselt number based on h as 2.0575 okay so ultimately we obtain the value of Nusselt number which is a constant which is equal to 2.0575 now in engineering practice it is uh, it is convenient to express Nusselt number based on something called as a hydraulic diameter rather than the depth edge so the definition of this hydraulic diameter is as shown here it is four times cross-sectional area by perimeter so if we invoke this definition for our uh, case so i'll show you how to do it so for our situation so you have this uh, parallel plate channel so this is 2h this is w okay so now if we invoke this what is the cross-sectional uh, area it is nothing but 2h times w okay what is the perimeter perimeter is 2 into 2h plus w okay so now your hydraulic diameter is 4 times area which is 2h times w divided by 2 into 2h plus w okay so this will get cancelled out since we have assumed that w is very large compared to h so this thing can be replaced by w so you will have 4 times h so this is the hydraulic diameter for our uh, problem okay so 4 times h if you substitute and if you calculate the Nusselt number Nusselt number with respect to hydraulic diameter so this is h into dh by k where dh is nothing but 4 times h so this will become 4 times Nusselt number based on h so that is what is written here so you will get 8.23 so this is the answer for our uh, problem so for a constant wall heat flux uh, boundary condition a hydraulically and thermally fully developed <coughs> laminar flow will yield a Nusselt number of 8.23 okay similarly you can calculate the hydraulic diameter whenever 
you have a cross section which is not circular okay for a circular cross section what will happen so we'll see quickly so if you take a circular cross section four times pi d squared by four okay what is the perimeter perimeter is pi d so you can see that for a circular cross section the diameter itself is your uh, hydraulic diameter for any other uh, shape of cross section like a square so you need to just substitute the cross sectional area and the perimeter okay so this is the first case of constant wall heat flux now let us go to the second uh, boundary condition which we had considered which is that of constant wall temperature let us see what uh, will happen to that problem hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow between parallel plates with constant wall temperature boundary condition so this is the uh, second case so let us take this okay again the energy equation for a two dimensional uh, situation without uh, viscous dissipation and heat generation is this okay for a constant wall temperature situation we already uh, had done our preliminary analysis we showed that dou t by dou x is theta into dtm by dx and v is zero for hydrodynamically uh, fully developed flow this is for hydrodynamically uh, this is from hydrodynamically fully developed flow assumption okay now if you substitute this okay and assume that there is no axial conduction uh, which is negligible so your uh, equation finally so uh, what happens when you assume axial conduction is negligible so this term dou square t by dou x square will become zero okay so this is the term which is related to conduction along the axial direction so this will become zero okay so your equation will reduce to this format so this is the uh, simplification and again by invoking the uh, overall energy balance so which we have done in the previous session overall energy balance so you will have that uh, dtm by dx is wall heat flux into perimeter by rho average velocity into area by cp okay now let us further analyze this situation and see what uh, we will get so the only change that you are now seeing is the presence of this theta on the lhs so this is the only difference uh, when you compare it with the previous case so if you do that you will realize that this is the only thing that is coming as an extra okay now on substitution and uh, simplification on the same lines that you had done for the previous case so you will have the final expression which is given by this so this is the final form of your uh, energy equation for a constant wall temperature boundary condition so again here also uh, this y bar should be y by capital H so y bar is y by capital H okay so this is the final form of the energy equation and this needs to be solved to get the Nusselt sum but unlike the previous case now this is not solvable analytically so you cannot solve it analytically why because of the presence of this theta here so which makes it impossible to get an analytical solution then how to get the value of Nusselt number so you can go with a numerical solution you can invoke a numerical solution to obtain the value of Nusselt number so which uh, I cannot discuss uh, in this uh, course okay so the above ordinary differential equation cannot be solved analytically so let us uh, this needs to be solved by a numerical approach so which is um, a shooting method so you need to assume a value for Nusselt number and successively go on improving the, your result until you obtain the value so if you do that so your Nusselt number will be 7.54 for this case also obviously in this case also it should be a constant but the nature of the equation makes it 
uh, analytically impossible to solve. So you should use a numerical approach and the value will be 7.54. Okay, so what are the conclusions now? Finally, for a hydrodynamically and thermally developed flow situation with constant overall heat flux boundary condition. So you can solve the uh, problem analytically. So what is the approach for the solution? You will simplify the energy equation uh, and then invoke uh, the velocity profile and later use the uh, non-dimensional temperature expression that you obtain in the uh, definition of mean temperature and finally obtain the value of Nusselt uh, number. For a constant wall temperature boundary condition though analytical solution is not possible. You have to rely with a numerical approach and the value that you will get is for this case of parallel plate uh, channel the value will be 7.5. Okay. So this concludes our discussion on the parallel plate uh, flow arrangement. Now let us go to the uh, important uh, flow, ge flow geometry which is of a circular type. So it, uh, as we mentioned at the start of the class itself, so which is very important. Okay. Now let us go to that uh, circular situation. Hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow inside a circular pipe with constant wall heat flux. Please remember that all the analysis that we are doing is for laminar flow only. So you cannot do any analytical calculation for turbulent flow. You have to rely on some empirical correlations uh, to solve turbulent flow problems. So all these things that we are discussing are for laminar conditions only. So I will not be pointing this laminar again and again. Okay. Now, for this situation, so the problem uh, now becomes a polar coordinate or a cylindrical coordinate uh, uh, configuration. So if you take a circular pipe, so this is the axis, this is the z axis, okay. So what is this? This is r. So this is z, this is the r direction. So we are neglecting the changes along theta. So we are neglecting the theta uh, changes as 0. Okay, again this is a two-dimensional uh, problem only. So no viscous heat dissipation, no heat generation. So this equation I had given um, while we discussed the energy equation. So I have taken it directly. Qualitatively, physically, all the concepts hold good between the previous discussion that we have had and for this situation also. Only thing is, uh, the variation for a constant wall heat flux with respect to x we had taken, so x, where x was the axis, for this problem now, since z is the axis, you need to replace x with z. So otherwise everything else is same. Okay. Now the velocity along the y direction for the previous case is v, uh, uh, replaced by vr, velocity along the radius. So this is 0. So same. Uh, concepts will hold good here also. Only thing is you have this r into dou t by dou r. This term is different. Now if you take a spherical system, so this will become r squared and this is also r squared. So that is the only difference. Why is this term actually originating? Because of uh, if you take the, uh, the control volume, the differential control volume, so the area along the uh, radius is 2 pi r dr. So that is the reason why uh, this is coming. So you can check it out uh, while deriving the terms for that. Okay. Now again let us uh, simplify uh, the expressions that we have got the energy equation that is. So after simplification and again uh, the dtm by dx uh, is the same. So sorry in this case it should be replaced with dtm by dz. So this will not change, this is dz, sorry for the error, so this is d into z, dtm by dz, because uh, the x of the previous problem is now replaced with z. Uh, 
uh, mass flow rate is rho u bar into a all these things are same okay only thing is you have to uh, substitute appropriate uh, values of uh, values which are corresponding to a circular cross section so here a is pi d squared by 4 a is pi d squared by 4 and perimeter will become pi d unlike uh, the previous case that we have discussed okay now let us define a new non-dimensional uh, radius as r bar which is given by r by capital r okay where r is the radius of the pipe so if i write it so this is your pipe this is the axis this is capital r this is capital r and this is the z direction okay um, now substituting and again uh, doing all the simplification so you will end up with this expression okay uh, finally you will have this expression so you can see that this is very similar to what you obtained uh, in the previous case for parallel channel flow only thing here uh, the change was d square theta by dy squared plus u by u bar into n u h equals 0 this was the equation for parallel plate channel now you can see this term is different for this case it is replaced by this okay y bar and this is similar exactly similar n u d is nestled number with respect to diameter h d by k okay otherwise it is very similar to the previous case what is this flow configuration called you have already discussed this extensively in uh, fluid mechanics course Hagen Poissoli flow. So this is Hagen Poissoli flow and you know the velocity distribution for that I have I am directly taking up the result So if you want to derive this you can easily get this by using the polar uh, Navier-Stokes equation Okay, so I am directly using this result V by Vz by average uh, velocity mean velocity V bar is 2 into 1 minus non-dimensional radius squared so I'll use this distribution here the approach is the exactly the same so what are the boundary conditions so when r bar equals 1 that is at the wall theta is 0 at the center line that is when r bar equals 0 d theta by d r bar is 0 due to symmetry on simplification you will get this uh, velocity profile that is you have to integrate the uh, energy equation twice invoke these boundary conditions get the value of the constant so finally for comparison i have given you the result okay again you cannot find Nusselt number uh, directly from this uh, expression so you need to invoke the definition of bulk mean temperature so you do that uh, the simplification is shown here so 2 by sorry here also there is a, a small typo so this is what is this this is dr so here it is correct it is dr r by capital r is r bar so one r i have sent it inside one i have retained so into uh, dr bar so this is the final uh, integral that we have to tackle okay let me erase this So after substituting the velocity profile and integrating exactly similar to what we did in the uh, previous exercise so you will get the Nusselt number as 4.36 a constant value which is 4.36 I hope you will do this integration uh, yourself and apply the limits if you find that you are getting any doubts you can always write to me and I will try to clarify your doubts so the Nusselt number for a constant wall heat flux boundary condition of hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow is 4.36 okay so there is no need to do that extra uh, step of hydraulic diameter here because for a circular cross section we saw that the hydraulic diameter is the diameter of the pipe itself okay now let us go to the second uh, condition that is constant wall temperature for constant 
wall temperature boundary condition again uh, the analysis is very similar to what we did for the parallel plate uh, configuration so i will not do the entire uh, thing so you you will get an expression exactly similar to the previous case only with a theta with a theta added uh, as you as we saw in the parallel plate channel again this is not solvable analytically so if you employ a numerical method like a shooting method and assume some values for Nusselt number and successively go on improving uh, your results so finally you will end up with Nusselt number as 3.66 so this is the value of Nusselt number for flow inside a circular pipe with constant wall temperature boundary condition when it is hydrodynamically and thermally developed now there are situations uh, wherein you might have arrangements uh, configuration like this your hydrodynamic uh, sorry so you have hydrodynamic and thermal boundary layer so a situation may come for very viscous oils you might have the uh, Hydro, uh, hydrodynamic boundary layer developed very quickly and the thermal boundary layer is developed at a very long distance after your uh, this is hydro, uh, hydrodynamic uh, fully developed flow situation your thermally fully developed flow will come after the hydrodynamic uh, hydrodynamically fully developed flow situation now what happens to heat transfer in this region so this type of problems uh, in this case particularly it is called as a thermally developing flow thermally so if you try to calculate heat transfer in this region thermally developed uh, developing flow configuration thermally developing flow and you have correlations which are suitable for this type of situation and in the problems if we get encounter this type of situation from the handbook we can easily use those correlations and solve the problem to solve this analytically is slightly difficult okay uh, and there is also a situation when you are hydrodynamically also your flow may not be developed even the velocity profile is also not developed thermal profile is also not uh, temperature profile is also not developed such type of problems are very difficult uh, to analyze analytically so we can uh, directly use some already available correlation okay and we have not discussed anything about turbulent uh, flow so for turbulent flow uh, the transition Reynolds number or the critical Reynolds number you know from your fluid mechanics is 2300 so if your Reynolds number for internal flow or flow through a pipe is greater than 2300 you can treat the flow as turbulent flow and solve your problem for turbulent flow situations you will have the Nusselt number as the correlation of somewhat of this kind uh, Reynolds number to the power of m Prandtl number to the power of m this we proved at the uh, very first lecture when we did the dimensional analysis for a post convection heat transfer problem so this is uh, the case when we use uh, when we have turbulent flow situation you have many uh, correlations which are used in industries uh, in practical engineering applications wherein uh, Nusselt number in general uh, is of this nature okay one very famous uh, correlation is of uh, Datus Bolter equation B O E L T S so this is available in the handbook Cedar Tate equation is also available so we will use those uh, co empirical correlations whenever we have turbulent flow uh, in our uh, problem okay so with this so let us conclude uh, this lecture session in this lecture session we have solved the energy equation for an internal flow uh, problem and we have obtained the constant Nusselt numbers for both uh, constant wall heat flux boundary condition and constant wall temperature boundary condition and we have also seen the analysis for a circular pipe and uh, we have noted down the uh, value of Nusselt number we have derived the values for Nusselt number uh, for a circular pipe 
uh, which is Hagen Poiseuille flow also. Okay, so this concludes the theoretical, uh, the theory portion of uh, internal flow forced convective heat transfer. From the next session, let us start solving some typical numerical examples which are very important from your examination point of view also and conclude our discussion on uh, forced convection heat transfer. Later we can proceed to natural convection heat transfer and we will conclude a natural convection in one or two lecture sessions. Thank you. Let us meet in the next session.